Hello, today I'm looking at a new ELRS module from Beta FPV. It looks like this and it's called the Nano V2 module. They've had a Nano module out before. This V2 has been upgraded. It says um, it can do higher power, so up to one watt on this uh, 2.4 gig version. Uh, better performance, so it supports uh, a backpack and a custom button. They said to help with easy operation. The idea is you can press a button and it, it, it does something. Uh, you can usually program these to like update the power or update the telemetry and stuff like that. Uh, so it's got better heat sinking. So they said they've added a higher RPM fan with purple copper heat sink fans to, to better help the heat sink. Because if you're running it at one watt, you definitely need to cool it down. And one interesting thing they said, they've got a, f a, a new design, this fully injection molded um, T antenna. The first antenna to have its own LED display, which sounds interesting. Let's see what we get. This is, this is the box, looks much like uh, the previous boxes things come in. And in there we get some instructions, USB-C cable. This is the little Nano 2 module itself and we've actually got two little buttons you can press in there. Uh, they give you this if you want to power it externally. It's a little XT30 to USB-C adapter. And this is the the antenna with an LED, which I'm guessing is this thing that lights up, essentially. Anyway, let's plug this into something and let's see what it does, basically. Okay, so I've got the Nano Module 2 out of the box. I just thought I'd just plug it in via USB to start with, because I wanted to see what would happen. And oh yeah, you get this, this light come on well, briefly there. And then this is going into sort of flashing mode, so it's probably in some sort of uh, update me because I'm not attached to a radio, which I will probably do. Now, I don't know if this is standard and you will get it, but BFPV always send one of these things, which is, yeah, it's a nano module. But if you want to attach it to a micro bay, then you can put it in one of these. Lots of manufacturers are doing this and it's really handy because you don't have to buy new modules. You can just slip it in there and put it in a standard micro or JR style bay like that. If I now turn this on, this comes on and starts making lights and we've got a light on there. So what is this running by default? Let's have a look. Beat FPV Nano V uh, TXV2 and it is running uh, something. <laughs> it doesn't say. It's one of those ones. But it has all the normal things. We've got um, obviously Wi-Fi. We've got a backpack on there uh, with the BLE joystick as you'd expect. And obviously these buttons may be able to do something. Let's try plugging it into a, uh, a computer and see what happens. So I've gone ahead and put the module into Wi-Fi mode. And one thing I, I was gonna go through to like the buttons and stuff, but as this is on one of the the master, which is basically saying it's, you know, it, it it's gone ahead and installed firmware there that didn't exist officially yet. But if I look on the configurator, it actually does have an official firmware for it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, flash that first, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and take a look at the buttons and stuff and what else it can do. But this should happen fairly quickly. Yeah, that's going all right. So we got that flashed and now it's showing up as firmware revision 332 which is, is much nicer. It's probably the same firmware but it's just now in the sort of official branch. And obviously that's now flashed with my binding phrase. And so the, the only difference in this one that you might find in a regular module is it's got a button configuration. So we've got two buttons and they're set up like this. So you've, you've got the option to change this. This is like enter binding mode but you've got all these various bits you've got the option of like a short press or a long press and then you've got a count about how many times you can do it. So it's worth knowing what your settings are and if you want to set them, you know, get into the habit of saying, okay, binding mode is like free presses uh, as opposed to increased power is like a long press. I said 0.5 seconds isn't particularly a long press. I would actually have it sort of like, I'd say two seconds is more of a long press than uh, a short press really. That said, it's like you, you have to do the short clicks multiple times to make it work. As I said, this has got a, a backpack in it. So if you're using uh, the backpack and want to update your VTX settings on 
your quad, um, possibly your goggles. I forgot which way it works now. You've got things like, you know, send VTX settings and that will change things over like that. Not something I'm going to do now. Um, I'm going to have a quick flight indoors before I can go to part two where we can check it out in the sort of the big wide world. So let's get me uh, a quad ready that I can fly indoors. Okay, got the module in. You can see the little light on, which is quite handy because you can always tell that the external module is powered. Um, I've got the little Meteor, I think this is called, and it's on walk snail, hopefully, as I've just got my walk snail goggles out. I just need to plug this in and hopefully take it for a little fly. I've put it onto um, dynamic power to see what we get. Currently, we're on 25 milliwatts, and hopefully, I've created like the right model thing for this. Let's find out. I haven't found this for a while. It's just gone uh, about half past six. It's very dark outside, so the house is dark. So I've turned all the lights on to help me. Whoops. <laughs> Little bit rusty, a bit bouncy. Ooh, the unnatural light does look very weird. You can tell it's all strange because the colours not not the norm. But um, we have gone up to like 100 milliwatts in the house. This little quad hasn't got much of an antenna. It's really just a piece of wire. So you kind of expect the, the milliwatts to go up. Mostly it's on 25 though, which is pretty fair. Where's my voltage gone? Over there. We got a little bit. Let's do a couple of little laps here. It's been so long since I've flown, especially outside. Outside is just like, forget about it. Flying outside, what's that all about? Never going to happen. I didn't turn the light up here, it's dark in the utility room. Anyway, this was just really a quick check. All I did with the model is um, I copied it to a new model and then I changed, uh, changed it from an internal module to an external module and that was it apart from putting dynamic power on so there you go <laughs> it works and I can fly with it good news so far well it works perfectly fine and you know it looks pretty good I'm not sure about the little LED on there it seems a little bit gimmicky you know if you want to know if your module's on most of the time you can just turn around and you've probably got some sort of led there and how visible in bright light that's going to be i'm not sure and of course they can't do much with it you know to change color and stuff because at the end of the day it's attached to the antenna and so you've just got a ground and presumably some sort of voltage coming up that uh, can actually do something there so obviously me just flying around my house with this thing doesn't lead me to any conclusions apart from the fact yeah it seems to work absolutely fine and I will go out and fly it when the weather improves in a proper field uh, but I'm still not convinced I'll be able to give you you know this one is better than that one or worse than that one unless something goes really wrong the problem is with all these modules um, is they're all very good Express LRS seems like quite a mature system now and everything just works well I've never been able to outfly it I've gone multiple kilometers on like a, a hundred milliwatts and using dynamic power means it's gonna pump the, this up a lot the only times uh, I've noticed it kick up to like a one watt is when I've been flying these very small quads which don't have a proper antenna around trees and stuff that's when the, the power goes up but you know aside from this little nano one, even with beta FPV, you've got this one, the Super G Nano, which can use Gemini mode. And if you've got a micro bay, you can put a little OLED on it. And it's so hard to sort of pin down what's better than the other now. You're just really looking at um, personal preference about what do you want a module? Do you want it quite low profile like this? Do you want an OLED on it like this? Do you want to be able to use Gemini? multiple things like that because we're all much and much and we're leaving out of course that many people have an inbuilt module in their radio which are also very good it used to be that you know the inbuilt modules were never as powerful as the external modules that's not the case anymore one nice thing about the nano tx v2 is it's also available in 868 or 915 so if you're flying those frequencies you can you can get the version to go with it but yeah i'm i'm not convinced i'll have any brilliant conclusions when i do fly it 
I can tell you that it's it's working fine and it will probably work very well. But I'll, I'll go out. I'll go out and I'll have like you know if I use this transmitter, I'll use the internal module versus the external module. I doubt there's going to be any difference, and if it is, it's going to be legible. But we'll try it and and see. In the meantime, of course, many thanks for BWV sort of supplying this uh, Nano V2 module. And uh, of course, there'll be links down below if you want to check it out in more detail. Hope that's been helpful for now, and I'll catch you next one. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.